Deportiva y con suite. Deportiva y con suite. La factoría del deporte de este New York para ti es una máquina. Es una máquina. Pensada para ti. Pensada para ti. Número uno en las redes sale la que Con informaciones importantes siempre frescas. Y con entrevistas que te ponen de cabeza. Lo mejor del deporte lo encontrarás aquí. Búscale en las redes, dale la que compartir. Suscríbete. Ay sí. Infórmate. Ok. Okay, everybody, we're back. We have Aaron Boone here. Uh, obviously, uh, excited to have Aaron back in the fold for three more years. Hopefully, everybody took a little restroom break after the GM's Q and A session. We're back. We could take a first question. Uh, Michael K, you have Jack Curry's information below you, but we know it's you, Michael K. Go ahead. Aaron, um, obviously, Brian, Brian Cashman said that if you were you know, a free agent, you'd be the number one managerial candidate out there. Did you consider going anywhere else, or was this the place that you always wanted to be? Well, this is definitely the place I want to be. You know, my family and I are here. Um, you know, the reality is, you know, I, I know the rumors and everything that were out there, um, but they were only that. You know, I, I've I've never stopped being under contract with the Yankees and um, you know, myself and my agent and my family have treated it as such. And so it was about w walking through the process and walking through the, eventually the negotiations of, of getting me back here to, to extend this. And uh, you know, today I'm really excited to, to be back here uh, moving forward with this group and trying to um, reach our goal of being a champion. We go next to Bruce Beck. Aaron, uh, you talk often about your love for the team and your love for that room. Does something have to change in that room or in the way you handle the players in that room for this team to reach that goal of winning a world championship? I, I mean, I think we need to, you know, I don't want to just say we need to get better. That's, that's obvious. Um, you know, I think it's important to acknowledge that I do feel like we do have the people in place to get it done. You know, there's got to be tweaks. There's got to be adjustments. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, starting from, from my standpoint and, and our staff and our coaching staff, you know, we've all got to get a little bit better and, and making sure we hold each other accountable and, and hold everyone accountable to, you know, the high expectations that we all have, um, that all our players have, frankly, that – that I have and that our staff have. You know, we believe that going into this year and, and really every year that I've been here, we believe that we're a team capable of competing for a championship, and that's been our expectation. And, you know, we've had varying degrees of success along the way, um, but we want to get to the top of the mountain. And uh, and I think it's, it's, it's on all of us to continue to grow, to continue to find areas where we can improve, and to hold each other to a, uh, to account in that regard, and and you know that's that's an area where hopefully I and and all of us can continue to get better. Do you think that mantra though, World Series or bust, that we hear every year is still realistic when this organization hasn't won a title since two thousand nine? Sure, I mean that's you know every year's different. Look, we'll 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 go through this winter. Um, you know, obviously the makeup of things will change. We, we've got some staff changes coming. There'll, there'll inevitably be some player turnover. Um, and, and we'll, you know, try and put ourselves in a position to go out and compete at the highest level. Um, and that'll be the expectation. Um, there's certain years where that's more realistic than others. Um, you know, I've certainly felt in my heart and my mind going into each year that it has been a realistic goal. Um, it's obviously very hard to attain and to get there, but, you know, I would expect um, hopefully next spring when we're pulling out of Tampa and heading north that um, that is rightfully our expectation. Otis Livingston, go ahead. Thank you. Hey, uh, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, can you put into words what an emotional roller coaster it was this season, especially in the second half 
I mean, you guys had a 13-game winning streak followed by losing 11 of 13, and then two weeks later you had a seven-game winning streak. Can you talk about the emotional roller coaster that was? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a, you know, in in that regard, it was a trying year. The the ups and downs that we have um, throughout the year, um, you know, it was it was puzzling at times, and you know, we're trying to wrap our arms around it at times to kind of pull ourselves out of certain situations. But but then we saw those glimpses of you know what we felt like we were capable of as a team. So I would say the the roller coaster of things made it you know, to go through it a little bit more of a trying year. Um, and I would say even going back to 2020, you know, it's been, it's been a trying couple of years for a lot of different reasons in, in, in just our world, you know. Um, but, you know, in the end, we, we put ourselves in a position to have a chance and, and, and ultimately falling short when you, when you get into the dances, is is awful and hurts um but i would say the the ups and downs of the year made it for a little bit more of a trying year to to go through uh i think on a personal level tom merriam you have the next question aaron how much were you involved in the decision to make the coaching changes and what are your thoughts on the changes in your coaching staff um Look, any time um, – it, it was difficult, you know, honestly. I mean, that's one of the things that I had to kind of work through and reconcile, you know, when any time you lose people off your staff. Look, you know, <clears throat> that room and, and the players that you become close with and certainly the coaching staff and staff members that, you know, really become like family to you and you go through so many – highs and lows and blood sweat and tears all that um and you know the fact that you know we we're not bringing back three people on our coaching staff um right now is you know that hurt honestly um those are people that in Marcus and PJ and Phil that not only do I respect and and um think they're really good at what they do in this game but they're also people that I love and care about a lot. So, um, and at the same time, though, it's un sometimes the nature of the business, you know, and, and there's tough decisions that have to be made. And that's the reality that, you know, we face every year, some years, ones that hit you a little harder and that affect you a little bit more. Um, but I also understand that's part of it. And, you know, you know, those, my relationships with those guys – um, remain strong and will continue that way. And I know they'll um, end up landing on their feet in, in where, whatever, you know, their road ends up next in their baseball life. But the relationship that I have with those guys will, will last forever. Um, but those are definitely tough things to, to go through, you know, personally um, and as an organization, but sometimes inevitable sometimes. Go next to Andy Martino. Uh, Aaron, were there any questions or concerns that you wanted answered before you decided? I know you said earlier about wanting to be here, but before you decided it was definitely the right fit for you going forward, like your level of input on uh, playing time, lineup, uh, who plays where, any of these things, do you feel like you're, you needed anything to be adjusted culturally for you to want to recommit? No, I mean, I mean the way you asked that question, I think, I think people's perceptions are incorrect sometimes about – how they perceive things are run and decided and things like that. Um, so, no, I, my biggest thing was, first of all, um, f for me personally, it's about, you know, my family and making sure we're all on board and, and, and that we're okay with this and what does this mean from a family standpoint. So, first and foremost, working through that, right? And then, you know, organizationally just, you know, wanting to um, – in the end with, with cash and with Hal and um, making sure that, you know, you know, I felt that they wanted me here as much as I want to be here. And, you know, they certainly conveyed that to me and made me feel good. So then once it was 
um, me kind of working through it with my family, then it was about just could we reach a deal, and um, you know that's that's kind of my process in this. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Brendan Cuddy, go ahead. Aaron, just how much of a say did you have in whether your coaches would return, the, the three who were let go? And um, will you, is it your understanding that you'll have a, a say in the new coaching staff or new coaches that are hired? Yeah, I mean, I'm always included in the process. I, you know, not a lot of say necessarily in, in some of the decisions that came down, but as far as putting a staff together, um, certainly putting a coaching staff together, um, you know, that's always something that I have a heavy hand in. And, and I think, you know, my opinion is valued and, and certainly me signing off on things is, I, I believe, very important and expected. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, you know, we've got some, some big shoes to fill and some big spots uh, in our staff may have even, you know, more than just replacing three or, you know, depending on di different directions we go in. Um, you know, we've got some important uh, decisions in front of us, important conversations, some important interviews inevitably in front of us that hopefully allow us to, you know, as Cash says, get to higher ground. You know, that's what we're shooting for. And, um, you know, it, it's going to be a challenging process, but, but one that I'm looking forward to going through and being a part of. And aside from just filling the spots that you have to fill now, are you guys considering – expanding the coaching staff adding new spots is there anything right. more that we can see outside of just new names in those open spots yeah i mean we'll see those are those will be things that we do talk about um you know if, if we want to add a spot or not um you know those will be things that cash and i and the front office and, and the staff start to have those conversations now in earnest as we move forward and, and try and fill out with some really good people so not sure if we're going to add or not um but I'm sure it's it, it'll be something that we certainly talk about. Marley Rivera, please unmute. Um, hi, Aaron. Um, specifically addressing the fans of your team, and and I'm well aware that this is a very difficult thing to do. But um, you know, there were a lot of fans who were extremely disappointed with the performance of the team this season, who wanted you to be fired, who wanted uh, Brian Cashman to be fired. Why do you believe that this is the right decision for the New York Yankees? Why are you the, the right person to lead this team moving forward? Well, I, look, I understand that's the nature of the business. And, and, you know, in this chair, you know, you bear a lot of the brunt of, of the criticism, understandably so. You know, this is kind of what you sign up for. Why? I, I don't know. I, I'll ultimately let people – speculate or talk about i'm sure it'll be a talked about subject on in many circles um as for what i mean i look I, I i think i can help lead us to the top that's why i'm here that's why i came back that's why i originally signed up to come here is that's what i'm chasing um and you know just personally trying to continue and to improve and grow in this job and um Ultimately, though, the proof will be in the pudding. You know, I mean, that we're trying to get there, and, and I know a lot of people won't be satisfied till, till, the, till we are there, and uh, that goes for all of us that are working towards that goal anyway. So, um, you know. Bradford Davis, go ahead. Hi, Aaron. Um the uh, did the the Athletic reported earlier this year that uh, the ball that was introduced this year was like you know um, had the effect of uh, which you know not only had the effect of reducing home run distance but like would uh, continue in uh, 2022 and so and so forth and so forth. I'm curious if the uh, changes in power from um, or at least apparent changes in power from that ball uh, impacted you know uh, the turnover on your coaching staff and if. Um, you know, the changes in ball performance uh, league-wide or with the team, you know, or, or, you know, just a different power in general um, is influencing, I guess, you know, you, if, if you believe it's going to influence your offensive strategy going forward. Um, well, I do, let me, 
I do think the ball, you know, had an impact on 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 the game this year and on the offense this year and on power. Um, I will say we all play with the same ball, though, you know, so it's it's on all of us to kind of navigate that and figure that out. Um, I do think it had a perhaps more of an effect on us, you know, as being a, a team that, um, you know, relies on power, especially the big part of the field. You know, I felt like this year there were a lot of balls, a lot of well-hit balls that, you know, fell short maybe in, in the big part of the field, in center field, or the or, or we're a team that obviously goes the other way with power a lot. So it probably had an effect on us more so. Um, but that said, you know, you got to – there's 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 little changes, there's little adjustments all the time uh, in the in the rules, in the rules of engagement, all these kind of things that you've got to, you know, <clears throat> as a professional athlete, as a big league ball player, as a big league franchise, you've got to, you know, you've got to make adjustments along the way to, you know, to, to learn how to thrive in, in whatever new environment you're in. And uh, we're, we're certainly tasked with that. And, uh, you know, yeah, I think it probably changes a little bit. You know, not, you know, I think in a small way it changes a little bit, you know, some approach things uh, moving forward. Go next to Lindsay Adler. Aaron, you said you think that there's sometimes a false perception out there about how things kind of work in this organization between you and the front office, et cetera. Um, then in, in your words, how would, how would you describe it? Uh, I mean, you, we, an accurate way? I mean, I, I don't know. We'd, we'd have to sit here and have a conversation we're not going to have for hours, you know, where you could ask all the questions you wanted. And I just think, you know, we, we, we built this straw man that this is what happens and, you know, uh, we call up and ask for permission to push this button. And, and it's at least my experience, and I've only been doing this with one organization, obviously. It's not the case. I mean, we have, we have a powerful front office that, you know, provides me and my staff with a lot of tools. Um, but ultimately, we're charged with going out there and, and making difficult decisions on a daily basis. Um, so... I think people like to think they know exactly how it goes and and have have done a good job of creating this perception or sometimes even this boogeyman of what it, how it all looks and I, I would say it's not quite like that. And then you know, having done this job for four years, looking forward to the next few years, what are some are there any things that you feel like you want to improve? Like what what do you think that Aaron Boone needs to do to be you know, sort of Aaron Boone 2.0, uh, the best yeah. effective. Oh, look, ultimately, I feel like my job, and one of the reasons I took this is because I f felt very confident in my ability and still do in in getting the most out of people, okay? That starts with coaching staff, empowering coaches to, to coach up, you know, their specific – area of expertise or their specific job to the best of their ability and that's on me to help them you know reach their potential there or create an environment to where they can really thrive but also um also how do i get the most out of individual players and i think everyone's a little bit different and one of my jobs is to tapping in is tapping into that and and that's one area where i feel like i need to continue to get better um and, you know, I, I do feel like, you know, <clears throat> I could do a better job in, in making sure that, you know, each individual is in the best position to be the best version of themselves. And that's something that will continue to be something that I try and challenge myself in. Sweetie Murray, go ahead. Aaron, some very smart people already asked my checklist of questions, so I'll just wait for Carton and Roberts at five, and uh, see you soon. All right, Brian Hope, go ahead. Hey, Aaron, uh, when you uh, walked out of Fenway Park that night, what was your sense of your situation? Did you expect to come back, and um, you know what what kind of tipped it that uh, you were going to be back? 
Um, I guess I guess I wasn't sure because I hadn't had those conversations yet, or we haven't we hadn't walked down that road. Um, you know, I, I think I know where Cash and I stood, and I know Cash, um, you know, certainly wanted expressed his desire, you know, to have me back. Um, but I also knew that I had to go through the process of of you know going through ownership and and them having all their conversations and. Um, you know, and then, you know, obviously some of the things that have come down over the last couple of weeks. Um, so I guess I wasn't sure and, and have had some, you know, tough moments when you lose um, people that you care a lot about on your staff. That That's, you know, made it a little more complicated for me and, and certainly, you know, made me, you know, work through some things and, you know, again, so kind of, you know, my process of, of, of first and foremost, making my family, making sure my family's on board, you know, having a lot of prayerful, prayerful consideration. Um, so I guess leaving, I wasn't sure. Um, and, you know, it was just gonna, I was certainly at peace with whatever uh, direction it went. And, uh, you know, glad to be sta sitting here in front of you today uh, with ultimately the resolution that, that's come down over the last couple of days. And then you said you wanted to be sure that Cashman and Hal wanted you back. Was there one conversation with either of them that really kind of told you where they stood? I mean, I think I've had some conversations along the way with Cash and, and certainly at the end of the year, you know, uh, we spoke a little bit and, and he, he, you know, definitely voiced his support and desire to have me back and um, made me feel like that was the case. Um, I had a good conversation with, with Hal um, beginning of last week um, just about stuff and, and certainly from my end was, was satisfied and um, heard what I felt like I wanted to hear and certainly understand the, the challenges and the tasks moving forward. But um, yeah, I think conversations with them put me in a space that if everything lined up, you know, otherwise I felt like this is where I wanted to be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go to Michael K. Please unmute. Aaron, this is um, a, a multi-pronged question. Um, I know you were close with all three coaches, but you were very, very close with Phil Mevin. He was one of your guys. He always had your back. Uh, he has been quoted as saying that he was not fired for anything on the field. So number one is, why was he let go or not brought back? And number two, getting a three-year contract, obviously the Yankees wanted you back. You had leverage. Was there ever a point where you said, listen, either Phil Nevin stays or I'm not coming back? Did you have that thought process and did you have that discussion? Um, I did not have a this or that, you know, Phil stays or I go, you know, or I wouldn't be here right now. Um, but honestly, you know, when, when the coaches were, that was one of the things I had to struggle through with for a couple of days. And again, had some difficult conversations with them. Um, again, people that I respect from a baseball standpoint and their ability to coach and what they're capable of doing, but also the love that I have for him as people, you know, and, and you say Phil, but I would include Marcus and PJ in that as well. So um, that was a tough couple of days for me, honestly, that I, I did have to, you know, I guess do some soul searching and, and really speak to them. And I've even talked to Phil about, you know, about, you know, coming back and things like that. So, those are tough conversations you work through and, and tough conversations you have. And, you know, I, but I, in the end, I also think that's sometimes the nature of the business and the difficulty of this business is that you, you lose or have to say goodbye in certain aspects to some people um, in, in some inevitable turnover. So that's probably one of the things that I struggled with the most, but certainly at peace with, um, certainly with them and, uh, and ultimately making my decision to come back. But and, Aaron, if, yeah. if Phil said, 
that it wasn't an on-field thing. What was the reason given to you why the organization did not bring back Phil Nevin specifically? What was the problem? You know, I think as I think as Cash touched on, I, I think in those cases, obviously, in a lot of our coaching, we, we have expiring contracts, so it's it's not necessarily. It is a little bit different than firing them right now. It's it's wanting to move in a little bit of a new direction and um, you know trying to do things that hopefully, you know, allow us to move to another level. And that sometimes comes with the pain of, of letting really good people walk. Go to Dan Martin. Aaron, throughout this process, I, I know you said you wanted to be back, uh, but considering you know, some other jobs opened up, was there, was there ever a consideration to, to letting yourself hit the market just to see, you know, what would happen? Um, consideration. Sure. I mean, I, look, I, th I think, you know, as I just answered, you know, I, I think there were a couple of days where there was some, a lot of careful thought, a lot of, you know, some difficult days of, of, of kind of working through it all. And again, you know, talking with people that I care about, um, certainly my family, and again, prayerful consideration in all of this. Um, yeah, I mean, you you got to work through some things, and and when you when you decide on something, you know, as big as this, you want to make sure you get to a point to where you're all in and doing it. And I I was able to get to that point, and uh, you know, as far as if if I was walk and let myself go on. Um, I also don't know what that would have produced or if I even wanted to go anywhere else, if that was going to be an option, um, that, that just, that's all you can speculate and think, but in the end, you know, this is where I wanted to be and, and, you know, having my family on board, um, I'm, I'm excited to, to continue this quest for for a championship and how important was it for you to get a, another multi-year deal so that you weren't kind of in this position again um honestly not it, it wasn't everything to me honestly um I, I would have been open to to different um versions whether you know a year two three whatever i, I would have been open to a lot frankly um so it wasn't a that wasn't a sticking point for me. Andy Martino, go ahead. Um, obviously, none of us in the media has been in your clubhouse for quite a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how do you feel overall about where your clubhouse culture is at? Uh, it, did you have the cohesion that you would have wanted this year during a challenging year? And are there areas, without expecting you to detail any specific issues or anything, are there areas that you feel culture-wise and the way guys communicate and relate to each other that could improve. Yeah, I think we have a lot of the necessary ingredient ingredients in there that um, allow us to be great. And I think that at times over, you know, my stay here over the four years have been real strong points. But I do think there's areas that we need to continue to get better and make sure that, um, you know, we're communicating properly, um, we're competing properly, um, that we all have that kind of singular mindset of, you know, when we're walking through those doors, it's about trying to win and trying to be our best as a team. And while I do think we absolutely have that in, in, um, overwhelmingly, I do think there's areas where, uh, we can continue to get to even a higher level and, and, you know, I think part of that is making sure we're all holding each other to a, a high account, and and I think that's where we can continue continue to get better. In terms of like, if a player does something he shouldn't be doing, are, are the other players appropriately um, self policing that? I responding? mean, is I, that what you mean? Not necessarily, but I I think that can be part of it, certainly. Okay. Thanks. Take a final question from Jack Curry. Aaron, I asked Brian 
how you could evolve in the position as a manager. And he talked about experience. And then when someone has experience as a job, they can get better at that job. In your most reflective moments, how do you see yourself going forward being able to improve in this position? Um, again, I think my biggest my biggest job is to make sure that I'm I'm you know as much as anyone helping getting the most out of coaching staff staff players you know I feel like that's as an important as a job as I have um, and I feel like every individual is a little bit different and you know it's my job to kind of tap into that and make sure we're getting the most out of that and um, I still think there's I can get better at that, at making sure that, you know, we're getting the most out of everyone in that room. Um, and that's what I see probably as my biggest job and where I can continue to improve. Um, you know, this, this last four years has certainly taught me a lot. You know, there's, and certainly the last two years with what we've gone through just, just as a world, you know, has, has thrown in, something into the conversation that you could have never imagined right um but i think it's just again it, it's making sure i'm getting the most out of coaches coaches staff and players and i feel like that's probably my number one job okay everybody that will conclude today's zoom interviews aaron thanks again appreciate your time um we'll be back in touch any follow-up questions you know where to find us yo, yo soy Alex Romero de los Diamond Bay Arizona, los invito a seguir con la máquina deportiva. Un saludo a todos los televidentes de la máquina deportiva, de parte de Alex Cora de los Mets de Nueva York. Anderson Hernández, un saludo para la máquina deportiva, de parte del menor de Borrell. Mi nombre es Juan Carlos de los Arizona Diamond Bay, los invito a que sigan con la máquina deportiva. Hola, la habla de la nación de los Toronto Blue Jays, un saludo para la máquina deportiva. Estás con Nelson Figueroa, con la máquina de, deportiva. Ay, una de cobal aquí, un saludo para la máquina deportiva. Aquí un saludo a Pedro Policiano, un saludito para la máquina deportiva. Hola, hola. Un saludo para toda la audiencia de la máquina deportiva, José Bautista de Toronto Blue Jays. Un saludo a esa fanática que sigue la máquina deportiva como siempre. Ven encima y que Dios lo bendiga. ¿Qué tal amigos? Les habla Iván Santana. Un saludo bien grande para todos mis amigos de la máquina deportiva. ¡Ripo! ¡Gurup!